For today's video, I thought I might do something a little different. Don't worry, it's still book related, but first I'd like to take you on a little excursion. We're going to take a short walk through the Fitzroy Gardens in Melbourne. You can hear some of the bush bird song in the background. Near the centre of the gardens, there's a small Tudor village, which was actually built by a London pensioner and gifted to the gardens in appreciation of Melbourne sending food to Britain during the Second World War. But this isn't our final destination. If you look behind the village, you'll see an old tree. Actually, it's the stump of a 400-year-old red gum. And that's where we're going today. This tree is known as the Fairies Tree and was carved by the artist Ola Cohn, unpaid and completed during her spare time, over three years during the Depression. The plaque beneath the tree explains, I've carved in a tree in the Fitzroy Gardens for you and the fairies, but mostly for the fairies and those who believe in them, for they will understand how necessary it is to have a fairy sanctuary, a place that is sacred and safe as a home should be to all living creatures. She wanted her tree to be a place of peace, a place that will make everyone happy, however sad and weary they may be at heart. Owa used the natural irregularities and curves of the tree trunk to reveal fairies, dwarves, gnomes, koalas, and a host of other Australian flora and fauna. During this time, she also published four books with original fairy tales about the fairies and other creatures that live in the tree and feature in the carvings. Her first book, The Fairies Tree, tells the story of a time hundreds of years ago when the seed of a red gum tree sprang into life and a fairy queen was born. The big tree became the fairies' home. But they were driven out by the noise of warring tribes and roamed the land for centuries. And meanwhile, their home was commandeered by an evil bunyip. On the advice of the wise magician, they elected the brave Stout Heart to challenge the bunyip. With one touch of his magic bulrush wand, he banished their foe to the Cave of No Escape, where he was trapped forevermore by the web of the greedy sorcerer spider. When the fairies finally returned to live in their big tree, they found it had died but the bees had used it to build a most magnificent palace with walls of honey gold. Her second book, More About the Fairies Tree, contains more adventures about the tree's inhabitants. Here you can see a musical imp dancing with the lyrebird, whose music was so charming it changed the character's sneaky snake who lost his power to sting. Here's the reading mother, who's telling her children that when the sky people bump their heads together and make a loud noise, it's followed by their crying, their tears turning into our rain. These books were published in the 1930s, and the vintage copies are delightful but naturally quite expensive. If you're interested in an affordable copy, the Fitzroy Gardens recently reprinted several of the books in small hardbacks, which include the illustrations, photographs and music from the original books. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tour of the fairies tree. Hope to see you again next time. Bye!